Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. So I continue to get uh, outreach uh, in terms of the uh, the ongoing issue uh, with uh, the the drones, the the possibility that the uh, forces uh, loyal to the Ahmed regime, the Abi Ahmed regime, are utilizing drones either of Chinese origin, Iranian origin, Turkish origin, uh, that are delivering uh, precision guided airstrikes. And we have seen uh, video evidence, uh, especially within the vicinity south of Wildea near Mursa, that possibly the MAML missile uh, was utilized by the uh, the uh, the Ethiopian Federal Forces or an intelligence agency uh, related to the uh, Ethiopian state. Now, the the question that I continue to get is, what is the method to uh, remove that drone threat? Now, unfortunately, uh, given the resources uh, that the Tigray region possesses a rather lack of resources and this is this isn't just uh, indicative of, of the Tigray region uh, or uh, any other area in the region on the Horn of Africa uh, we can go all the way up and we can look at recent conflict that has taken place uh, such as uh, the uh, the Azeri campaign to uh, reconquer or attempt to reconquer the Nagorno-Karabakh from the Armenians. Now, the the Armenians, while obviously not a, a, a superpower, not having the same type, type of, of, of capabilities as, uh, let's say, the European Union, the United States, uh, the, the Russian Federation. Now, now, with that being said, the Russian Federation did provide Armenia with certain assets that they thought would be able to negate the drone issue, and they were not able to do that. Russian assets uh, found it very difficult to stop the Turkish slash Azeri drone issue, uh, even over Syria, uh, where forces of the Russian Federation and its close allies uh, the, within the Assyrian Arab army again, we're having very tough problems finding a way to mitigate the drone issue, the Turkish uh, TB2 drone issue. Again, very small craft, uh, able to, 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 to fly at times low, very hard to see on radars. Again, uh, very, very small radar cross-section um, made up of composite material, and uh, it doesn't give off any any real emissions other than its uh, direct line of sight data link, and it uh, utilizes a forward-looking in infrared optic with a, a laser designator, and uh, that is how it, it goes after its targets. But again, we've seen it time and time again, even with Russian technology operating in Syria, operating... Uh, in uh, the, the, the Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, we have even seen, and it's just not, I, I, I don't want to focus on just Russian technology, but when the Iranians, and, and we, we were pretty sh sure it was an Iranian attack against the, uh, the Saudi uh, oil facilities uh, in eastern Saudi Arabia, uh, both cruise missiles and drones were utilized. And even the Saudis, with in some cases some fairly advanced American systems, while maybe not active, but they they did have the ability to uh, have fairly uh, advanced abilities in terms of seeing what was coming into their airspace, and they were not able to uh, stop that initial attack uh, by the the Iranians with with their with their drones as well. So again, the small cross section of these drones uh, have made it very difficult for some states uh, to engage these systems. Now we have seen the Israelis 
uh, with its systems uh, be relatively successful in, in defeating some of those drones. And the, the Israelis obviously are partnered uh, directly in some cases with the United States and some very, very anti-drone systems uh, are available to the Israelis and they have been used successfully. Now, with that being said, it is a very, very finite community uh, that has access to that kind of technology. So the idea that uh, the, the Tigray region uh, could uh, could get that technology and deploy it is 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 very very remote if if even possible. But again, uh, basically, in order to stop these systems, uh, you you need really a matrix of systems. You need the ability to first uh, identify the aircraft, the airframe, the small cross section with with an advanced radar or uh, have a, a more advanced uh, optic, a, a forward-looking infrared optic that is, that is very sensitive and is able to identify and, and auto-track the airframe, or you have the ability to uh, create an environment with uh, electronic warfare where you jam those data links and uh, make it very difficult for that aircraft to maintain a data link with its control station. And uh, again, uh, we, we've seen Russian systems deployed uh, by the Armenians that simply didn't work. Uh, we've seen some very advanced air de defense systems, such, e at, such as even the, the S-300 and other systems as well. We have seen uh, air defense systems uh, utilized by the Syrians that were directly attacked by some of these kamikaze drones and they were unable to shoot those drones down. So incredibly uh, challenging uh, uh, issue in terms of being able to shoot those dr drones down. Some states have seen success. We've seen the Israelis have success, but uh, in some cases the Israelis don't even share that technology with, with, with their U.S. partners. The, uh, the issue uh, has also been seen, again, in southern Saudi Arabia, uh, near the border with the Yemen and the Houthis. Again, we've seen successful uh, drone operations by uh, Yemen, or the Houthis, with its, uh, uh, with its uh, uh, Iranian-operated uh, drones that, are op that, that have been operational over southern Saudi Arabia, that have uh, uh, attacked uh, uh, air bases inside of Saudi, Saudi Arabia. So the idea that there is just a, a system that, that takes down these, these very small drones uh, just is, it's really hit or miss. And, and, in, and in most cases, uh, right now, uh, depending on which nation state you are, uh, the, the drone uh, technology has an upper hand over the actual air defense technology with some just some possible exceptions to the Israelis, the United States, uh, I mean the the European Union, France, Germany haven't really been engaged uh, by drones, so we don't we don't know if they even have an anti-drone capability. They may. Uh, there's some really advanced systems uh, within the EU that that have been developed, but uh, right now, from just uh, talking about the current conflict in the Tigray region. No, unfortunately, uh, there's just not a system that could be purchased and deployed uh, that would would really help negate the drone. Now, with that being said, uh, we're, we're probably not seeing a, a, a huge amount of, amounts of, of drones uh, being utilized uh, inside and over the Amhara uh, Tigray region as well. So it's not a uh, a a, convl a conflict changing technology right now given the amounts that are being used. Another issue and a question came up in terms of acquiring uh, anti-tank guided weapon systems. Um, again, very difficult for the Tigray region to obtain those, sy those sy systems, um, especially on, a, on an open market uh, given the fact that they're really surrounded by uh, adversaries uh, both north east, west, and they, they don't have the ability to just uh, buy a system and have it have it delivered. 
because of the situation at hand. Now, that could that change eventually? Uh, possibly. But right now, very challenging. And uh, any uh, anti-tank guided weapon systems that uh, are being utilized uh, by uh, the, uh, the Tigray region are having to be smuggled in either... Uh, through possibly uh, the Afar region coming in from other ports or uh, in through uh, uh, western Tigray through the Sudan, which obviously is controlled by a, 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 a group of individuals such as the Amhara paramilitaries, the Yatrian army that is obviously not wanting those systems to get into the Tigray region. So again, a very, very difficult situation to get those uh, supplies in. Now, could we see something change possibly uh, on the border with uh, Kenya as the Oromo Liberation Army continues to, uh, to press its uh, operations uh, against the, uh, the former state of Ethiopia? Uh, possibly, uh, but again, uh, just very, very difficult uh, for that to occur, meaning purchasing systems, uh, they're very expensive and uh, have those systems effectively basically smuggled in uh, through uh, through enemy territory. But uh, that that's the situation right now in terms of acquiring both uh, systems that would uh, have the ability to uh, negate drones. Now, obviously, small drones uh, uh, that are uh, uh, commercially available that uh, can be used for reconnaissance. I mean, obviously, those drones fly very, very low and uh, can be hit by by gunfire in some cases. But the military-grade drone, such as the TB2 drone that's being deployed by the, the uh, Turks, um, very, very, very difficult to engage and shoot down. Um, it's, it's, it's not like these systems fly directly over you. There is, a, is what they call a slant. There's, there's slant ranges, so... They, they fly 5,000, 10,000 feet in the air, so again, fairly fairly high up, uh, at times under underneath cloud level, over cloud level, then they come down. And uh, that slant range also, because of that forward-looking infrared optic, that little bubble on the front, uh, can see very, very far. It has, it, it has the, the ability to to look about you know five kilometers on a slant so a lot of times human eye can't even see these drones especially at night uh, that are engaging forces on the ground you don't even know they're there until you uh, you, you you can hear the uh, the missile uh, basically one second before it impacts your position and uh, again a very very challenging situation to be in if you're on the receiving end of that sort of technology unfortunately but uh I just wanted to address that. Have gotten a few uh, uh, requests again, requests for information. I've done other videos about this as well, so feel free to go back and, and look at those videos as well. Have a good day, everybody.